It's a competition that ends with someone getting slimed. Hang on for Community Kids. Hey everyone, welcome to the Community Kids Show. My name is Charlotte and today is one of my most favorite Bible stories of all time and I can't wait for you to hear it. During this series called Amazed, we are talking all about the life of the prophet Elijah. Before we get to the story, let's jump into our Community Kids values. I'll say the value and you shout out the reason why. Here we go. Number one, love God. Why? Because God is love and he first loved us. Number two, love people. Why? Because God loves all people. Number three, do your best. Why? Because God will do the rest. And number four is have fun. <laughs> Why? Because God gives us joy. Awesome job. So it's time to go check in with Cool Carl. Now he's been really busy trying to plan out all the details of his entire life. So let's go see what he's up to. Oh, hi there, little chicken nuggets. It's me, Carl. Welcome to Grow TV. Welcome to Grow TV. Hosted by Carl. Where we have fun with our friends, talk about Jesus, and go over everything the Bible has to offer. Now once again, welcome to Cool TV! There you are, and there you go. Oh, hey kids! I'm so glad you can make it. I've had a crazy busy week. I'm trying to do something that's super difficult. I'm trying to get over. You see, getting organized is a very mature and big kid thing to do. I feel like my life is kind of crazy, and I gotta get a hold of it. But the more I try to get a hold of it, the more it feels like I'm just trying to hold on to a slimy, shaking fish. So I figured if I started to plan out my life, started making choices for my future, it would be better. Like for example, this is my bucket list journal. Inside are all the things I want to do before I go to heaven. Go skydiving. Fly a kite on the Eiffel Tower. Wear a face mask of Chick-fil-A sauce. Dropkick something. Find out what pepper spray feels like. Brush a shark's tooth. Eat a gallon of mayonnaise at a rodeo. Play rock, paper, scissors with a grizzly bear. And hold a conference call. That's just a few. And this right here, this is my life plan journal. Everything I'm ever gonna do in my life is in here. I planned it all out. That way, there's no surprises. I get to do what I want. It's perfect. Carl. TJ, it's great to see you, man. <laughs> Whoa, look at you. Look like you got a clean desk for a change, huh? Yes, sir. I've got everything in place. It's all clean, and the rest of my life is planned out. The rest of your life? <laughs> oh, okay. That's right. The whole enchilada. Every day from here on out. Wow. All right. So I guess you definitely know what's best for your life, huh? Of course. Who better make those decisions and know what's best for me <laughs> than me? So... Why don't you share with me a little bit of the plan you have laid out so far for the rest of your life? I thought you'd never ask. At age 25, I'm going to be a millionaire. That's a given. I'll invest hundreds of dollars into genetic research so that I can become part human and part stingray. At age 30, I'll move to Ireland and become a professional pizza eater. At age 35, I'll buy a boat and devote 10 years to mapping out the ocean and trying to figure out Loch Ness Monster. After I turn 45, I'll spend the rest of my life living on the beach, catching fish, yelling at birds. <laughs> That's a perfect life. Wow, that, that's something, Carl. I know, feels good knowing things will go my way. Sure. What's wrong? Well, I just know that there are times when we don't know what's best for our lives because to be honest, things change. I don't know if that's true. I'd probably need a Bible story to back it up, possibly change my mind. Well, you're in luck. Let's take a look at uh, 1 Kings 18. Well, alrighty then. So last week we were talking about Elijah, and this week we'll be talking about... SpongeBob? No, Elijah. Elijah. We'll be talking about Elijah. Okay, okay, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> duh, I knew that. 
So Elijah was hiding for almost three years. God told him to go back out and talk to King Ahab, who didn't like Elijah very much. Because now Ahab and his people have been worshiping other gods besides the one true God. Well, that's not good. No, it sure wasn't. So after a while, they went out to a place called Mount Carmel. Elijah asked the people why they were worshiping all these other different gods, especially the one called Baal. Then Elijah issued a challenge. Oh, I love challenges. The people who followed Baal would have a bull to sacrifice and Elijah would get a bull to sacrifice as well. They would put the bull on the altar and the one that was completely burnt up by fire from heaven would prove that their God was the real God. Wow, things are starting to heat up. <laughs> Good one. So the people of Baal went first. They spent hours and hours trying to get their God to send fire from heaven, but nothing worked. So that means their plan and their God didn't work. Huh. You're absolutely right. So after all that effort and no fire, they finally gave up. Then it was Elijah's turn. <laughs> oh, yeah. First, Elijah made them soak the bull in water. Water? That's not going to help it burn it up. Nope. But Elijah was trying to make a point. Elijah knew that God was powerful enough to set something on fire that was soaking wet. So after they put the water on the bull, Elijah said a simple prayer. And then guess what happened? Fire? Fire. Fire came from heaven and burnt up the bull, burnt up the water, burnt up the wood, even burnt up the rocks. What? That's crazy. I bet all the people of Baal didn't have that plan. They sure didn't. You see, Carl, the people of Baal made their own plans, lived how they saw fit and did what they wanted to do. But we are called to listen to God and trust God in every circumstance. Wow. I guess I never thought about it like that. It's amazing God knows what's best for me. Hey, 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 that's our big idea. <gasps> Today's big idea is, it's amazing. God knows what's best for me. So on the count of three, we will say it out loud. You ready, Carl? Ready? One, two, three. It's, it's amazing. amazing. God, God knows, knows what's, what's best, best for me. me. Woohoo! <laughs> God Good job, sure does. Man. Good job, man. All right. Good job, everyone. So TJ, I guess I can throw these all out, huh? You don't have to do that. Just as long as you trust and listen to God first. I guess you're right. Question, TJ. Do you think God would want me to do this? Which one is that, man? Well, what's my goal this year? Hug a porcupine. Yeah, I'd probably pass on that one. <laughs> you're probably right. I'll go catch one. Wait, Carl. No, don't. I... <sighs> all right, kids. Listen. We'll see y'all next week. See you next time. Thank you for watching and tune in next week for a new episode of Road TV. Last week, we were introduced to Elijah. Elijah was a prophet of God. Do you remember what a prophet is? A prophet is a person who God speaks through to deliver a message. Now, during the time that Elijah lived, God's people were not obeying God. And the northern kingdom of Israel had an evil king and queen, Ahab and Jezebel. They had turned away from God and began worshiping other gods, specifically one named Baal. Now, because of their rebellion, God had stopped all the rain and the people were experiencing a drought. The rivers and the streams were all drying up and the people were getting desperate for rain. Elijah had told the king and queen what God desired and that God was going to stop it from raining because the people had turned their backs on God. And instead of repenting or changing their minds and turning back to God, they got angry and they began to punish all the prophets of the Lord God. Elijah had been in hiding for three years because of this. He was afraid that King Ahab would kill him. And now 
God is telling Elijah it's time to come out of hiding. So Elijah comes out of hiding and he tells Ahab to go gather all the prophets of Baal and meet him on Mount Carmel. They all gather on this mountain and Elijah addresses all the people. He says, quit wavering between two beliefs. If the Lord is really God, then follow him. And if it's Baal, then follow him. So let's settle this debate. So Elijah sets up a competition between the Lord God and Baal, between himself, one prophet of the Lord God, and 450 prophets of Baal. They both prepare their sacrifice of a bull, but Elijah says, don't set fire to the altar. Instead, we're going to see which one, Baal or the Lord, is really God. So the one who sends down fire to light his altar it is that one that is truly God. So the prophets of Baal go first and their bull has been prepared and it's on the altar and they begin to pray for Baal to send fire. Now all morning they cry out to Baal and no fire. At noon, Elijah says, pray louder. Maybe Baal can't hear you. Maybe he's gone on a far away journey or maybe he's stuck in the bathroom. So the prophets of Baal cry louder and louder and louder. And this went on all day long. And as the evening came, nothing happened. There was no voice from Baal, no answer, and no fire. Now it's Elijah's turn. He had all the people come near to him and he repairs the altar of the Lord with 12 stones, one for each of the tribes of Israel. Then he digs a trench around the altar and he tells the people to go fill four water jars with water and pour over the offering. You know, water, the thing that they're running out of because there's a drought and he wants them to go get water and dump it out. They take the precious water and they pour it out. He says, do it again. So they do. Elijah says one more time. So they do it a third time. There was so much water on the altar that it had filled up the trench. And then Elijah simply prayed, O oh Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, prove today that you are God in Israel and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all this at your command. O oh Lord, answer me. Answer me so these people will know that you, O oh Lord, are God and that you have brought them back to yourself. And all at once, fire came down from heaven, and it burned up the bull, the wood, the stones, and the dust. It even burned up every drop of water that they had poured out that had filled up the trench. And when all the people saw this, they fell face down on the ground, and they cried out, The Lord, He is God. Yes, the Lord is God. Sometimes we think we know what's best for ourselves, but the one who created us, he's the one who truly knows what's best for us. He made us and knows exactly what we need. Elijah trusted that God knew what was best, and when God told him to come out of hiding, he did. And because of that, the people saw who was really God. And after all this, Elijah climbed to the very top of Mount Carmel, and he went there to pray for rain. And guess what? The rain came. What can you trust God with? Do you trust that he knows what's best for you? And what will God do in your life as you trust him? Whatever it is, I know it's going to be amazing. Community Kids, let me introduce you to my friend. This is Barbie. Hi. And then you all know my daughter, hey, Julina. Up? Maybe hey. some of you don't. This is Jules. Hi. So our competition today is bottle flipping. I know some of you maybe have done this a time or two, us not so much. So the competition is who can flip successfully three bottles first. Whoever wins gets to dump slime on the loser's head. Are you ready? 
Here we go. Julina's going to tell us if we're cheating. So here we go. Ready? Set. Go! Ah, that's mine, homie. Oh! month's memory verse by learning the sign language that goes along with it. Check this out. Deuteronomy 7 verse 21. The Lord your God, who is present with you, is a great and awesome God. The Lord your God, who is present with you, is a great and awesome God. The Lord your God, who is present with you, is a great and an awesome God. God does know what's best for us. He is a good God who wants the very best for us. He is for us and he loves us so much. Because of his great love, he sent his son, Jesus, to fix our relationship with him. See, we've all sinned or done wrong and our sin separated us from God and caused death to come. There was nothing we could do to fix our sin problem. This is why Jesus came. He would take our punishment for sin by dying on the cross and fix our relationship with God and give us eternal or everlasting life. He showed he had the power to forgive our sins by raising back to life three days later. Now, if you want to begin a relationship with him, just follow Jesus as your savior, king, and friend. Believe that Jesus died for you and that he rose from the dead. And love him and others the way that he loves you. And as you live and love like Jesus, tell others all about it. If you want to make the choice to follow Jesus and to live your whole life depending on him to help you say no to sin, talk to your parents or reach out to us. We would love to help you on your journey with Jesus. And if you know someone who needs to hear this message, share it with them. Until next time, be a shining light for Jesus. Bye, friends.